So what's your vision of the the future? What would be a good um, situation for, for women in 50 years' time? What I hope to do, what I think, I guess, is the Reactionary Feminist Project, is to find a way of creating a more, like, sustainable i think that status quo is unsustainable not least because it causes crashing birth rates which means that the culture goes up in smoke eventually right so you need to have a culture which is sort of is pro maternity also i would hope provides space for those people for whom motherhood and fatherhood are completely the wrong thing there will always be those people there always have been that is I mean, the, re- the challenge, it really is a challenge, is to have simultaneously a default culture, but also be tolerant of people who fall outside of the default. Yeah, like Whereas the it non-normative, seems... like me. For instance. Right. Whereas it seems that at the moment we have, having a default culture is, is forbidden, at least within the sort of progressive worldview, which does mean that people, you know, for instance, that, that motherhood is just seen as a kind of lifestyle to- choice which shouldn't be valorized in any way, if anything. I mean, I, I would say progressive culture tends to denigrate motherhood because it's going right to the other end of the... Of the it's, 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 it's a reaction against traditionalism. Um, but the challenge... I mean, you're right. Tr- traditional societies are from really horrible for women and for men. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd say probably <laughs> more because of poverty in general. I'd say that yes, poverty but is I probably... Think it's very yeah. hard to have any kind of... Um... I mean, I just have it, I, uh, given it, that you're not, uh, you know, you're looking for a, this all to be happening in a relatively affluent society where okay, yeah. presumably there is l- very little coercion. So mm. you want to produce a culture, do you, that, that sort of incentivizes women to get married, have children with men, stay married um, and stay at home. Is that, a, but it can't be the old one so it has to be new it still has to be some kind of choice even if it's or it has to feel like a choice from the inside maybe yeah i mean stay at home during the young children years and given that we have very long lifespans that's not actually that high proportion of your adult years but yes uh i mean i think there are certain things that aren't ever going back into the into the bottle right like we have the internet we have all of this stuff now so we have we have the pill so whatever comes whatever culture came out it isn't going to look exactly like the 1950s or the 1450s it's going it is going to be different i think though that my assumption is that there are lots of ways in which our current culture is very unusual and is very very different from which is to say is very very different from all the cultures that have come before and in in other parts of the world and that seems to me to almost certainly be indicative of us being it not being self-sustaining. We need to find some way, you know, like for instance, every culture has some kind of conception of marriage. And that suggests to me that there's something about marriage which serves an important function. And that if you try and get rid of it, you're either going to have to recreate it in some new way, or you're going to have social problems because whatever function it's performing isn't being performed. So You know, Mary has this line about the reactionary is like chasing shades on sacred hills. I can't remember exactly what it is, but the the, the reason that she alighted on the word reactionary rather than conservative is because conservative suggests a different relationship to the recent past. Conservative suggests that you want to retain the status quo or whatever recent setup like the 1950s say. Whereas in Mary's mind, reactionary is more about finding deeper commonalities across time and place and trying to successfully recreate them in your own culture Mm. is that persuasive (laughs) (laughs) wave a magic wand and (laughs) or maybe model it up 4d so i can see this properly i mean (laughs) i think in terms of just in terms of the semantics i think reactionary i think we're all reactionary these days that everybody's reacting to everybody else that's part of the problem in politics (laughs) nobody can find a sort of still center or not even, i don't mean center ground i just mean some place that isn't just a um oh i'm not with them <laughs> i don't think that i'm with them but um but it's true that um you're really revolu- you're proposing a revolution there's nothing conservative about what you're proposing and in fact liberals would be the most conservative 
because we are in a thoroughly liberalised society, like you say, and I, I don't think, I personally think um, there'd have to be massive economic changes and um, God knows what else, some kind of apocalypse <laughs> to get uh, to get to this kind of stage you might think was good. And I'm obviously, you wouldn't think it was good if there was an apocalypse involved. So, no, or, or indeed a violent, violent revolution. Um, no, no. I mean, I don't disagree that it's a really tough project and I'm not really expecting to win. And I also don't have any power whatsoever, so, so it's a little completely academic. But I actually think that most people, though, most people are instinctively quite conservative. And, by which you mean by, by in, in In terms of safe family stuff, like would like to have children, would like to get married, all of that kind of normy stuff has never really been erased in terms of people's aspirations. I definitely think they want to have children. But I mean, as we can see, gay men want to have children. Um, lots, of, lots of people want to have children. And that's to do with, that could, well, it could be a range of things, but obviously in some cases it's to do with just not being willing to accept your own mortality <laughs> I don't know feeling like you want to leave someone behind it might not be as Freudian you. as that it might be it might just be the babies are cute or whatever it's a biological drive yeah yeah well that um, too but I feel lots of people want yeah. children but I don't know that I think they want to get married you know as part of that deal they maybe want to be with someone and, and obviously there's a cultural or an actual reason why doing it with somebody else is better than doing on your own um, in terms of resources, shed labour and so on. But um, I'm not sure I understand why marriage has to be in that story. You think that most... Okay, two questions. Do you think that most people <laughs> are, are, don't aspire to marriage as much as I'm assuming? or do, Well, you've probably you think... got some stats at your fingertips to tell me that I'm wrong. I don't, I don't, my... I don't really. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, going to go off my like, my like Instagram feed where women are constantly well, well, I, I think you might find that that's, rings, that's a bit of a bubble, you know, you've heard of Taylor to me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but second question, do you, do you think that marriage, regardless of what polling might say, do you think that ha having an institution like marriage, say returning to a, a stronger institution of marriage than we have now, might have net social benefits that would be good in general? I think or... it would be good to incentivise couples to stay together for the sake of the children. Mm -hmm. And I speak as a divorcee. <laughs> um, but I can see, I can see that. Uh, everyone could see that, I think, if they were being honest. Um, with obviously some exceptions uh, when the, when the um, environment is unsafe or extremely toxic. But, um, but I don't know about this, you know, making it much harder to divorce, um, perhaps I'm not keeping up with the latest thinking on this and how it might be compatible with allowing women to get out of abusive relationships. What I do, I've always thought, I'm sure you agree with me, is if we're going to start strengthening marriage as an institution, we're going to have to do a lot more beforehand with um, people to, um, to tool them up to choose uh, partners and, and I'm talking mainly about men who won't try to kill them <laughs> or won't drink themselves to death in front of them or um, you know there's there's obviously I think we're not very good at having difficult conversations about what a appropriate partner looks like if the proposal is that you can't immediately leave as soon as things go wrong. Yeah that's true I mean I th the once one stat on my side in this case is that women in who are not married to their partners are actually more likely to be victims of domestic violence than women who are married to their partners i don't think that's because marriage has a magical no it's ability not. to reduce domestic violence it's because of who's it's, it's basically i think a class marker probably that's yes, that i think that's um, true yeah um but it does at least suggest that it's not as if marriage, marriage is inevitably worse yeah no probably not not being able to get out of i mean I'd also say that normally the thing that stops a woman, at least nowadays, the thing that stops women leaving abusive relationships isn't anything legal or even even really practical things. It's, it's, it's almost always the psychological impediments to leaving. And I, and I mean, I do think that it should be easier to... Look, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I do obviously not... I really don't want women who are being abused to be stuck in marriages and I don't no, I know no you don't because you, and I'm your, not quite sure behind that 
I, I'm not quite sure what the like how you perfectly design any kind of institution, policy, whatever, so that you what we basically want is we should say you really should stay in your marriage unless you have a great reason not to. The problem is that it's left to people to subjective <laughs> decision making as to whether or not they have a great reason. It's still left, and I assume it would this in this respect would only get worse rather than better under the new sort of regime it's left to women to do mind-bogglingly um dull repetitive knackering sleepless um work you know and 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 then be still be surrounded by a kind of world that invites them outside or tells them that there's all these exciting things happening everywhere they're just not part of now it obviously for some people you know they hear my words and they think how can you think that's dull? It's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done. It's wonderful. It's amazing. But lots and lots of women don't feel like that because there is a, quite a lot that's extremely boring about it or tiring about it, exhausting about it, thankless about it, especially if your children are difficult or, you know. So there's just a lot of stuff that the feminists were right to draw attention to. It, or anyone's right. It doesn't have to be feminist. It's just a fact that we should recognise that a lot of it is... is um is not its own reward and and at the same time we've now got a world which says there's all these other routes available to you and we're not proposing i've assumed to cut them all off <laughs> too so it's always going to be a challenge i think in a modern world to make it look attractive without becoming somewhat coercive and i just don't think that would be the right route so i, I don't know what the solution is exactly <laughs>